At Nordstrom, you can shop the best holiday gifts for everyone you love, all in one place. You'll find beauty favorites, cozy presents, fun ideas under 100, and more. Like festive dressing for you and your home. Experience the magic at your favorite store. Or order on Nordstrom.com with free shipping and returns. Need it faster? Pick up your order today in store. The best gifts are yours at Nordstrom. On today's Smart 7, the truth in Gaza continues, senior doctors stop striking, and lots more. It's Tuesday, 28th of November. It's National Day of Giving, and happy birthday, Karen Gillan. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. There was good news on Monday, as the Israel-Hamas ceasefire, which was due to end on Monday night, was extended for at least two more days. The temporary truce has seen over 2,000 trucks cross over into Gaza, carrying aid, food and fuel, and the additional two days will make a big difference, according to White House spokesman John Kirby. This humanitarian pause has already brought a halt to the fighting, together with a surge of humanitarian assistance. Now, in order to extend the pause, Hamas has committed to releasing another 20 women and children over the next two days. We would, of course, hope to see the pause extended further, and that will depend upon Hamas continuing to release hostages. A fourth round of hostages were released on Monday night, bringing the total to over 70, mainly women and children. Israel has also continued to release Palestinian prisoners it has been holding as the humanitarian pause continues. But Israel's defence minister addressed IDF troops on Monday evening and promised that when the pause ends, the fighting will resume with the same power and more. With growing calls from the international community for a more prolonged end to fighting, Business and Trade Secretary Kemi Badenoch says the government continues to back Israel and brushed off concerns over civilian casualty levels. We want to make sure that there is not a case at all for there to be any any scenario where Israel is under criticism for breaking uh, international law. It looks like they have taken great pains to make sure that they're staying within the confines of the law. We applaud them for that. The COVID inquiry continues this week, with former Health Secretary Matt Hancock expected to testify on Thursday and Friday. That's before Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak take the stand, and the current PM will face stiff questioning over his Eat Out to Help Out scheme, which fared poorly amongst last week's scientific witnesses. Monday saw the continuation of what has been a recurring theme in the inquiry so far that far too much control was placed in a chaotic Downing Street while Parliament and regional infrastructure was ignored. London Mayor Sadiq Khan testified that the decision to exclude him and members of the Greater London Authority from COBRA meetings in early March meant that poorer and minority ethnic communities were unduly exposed to the virus. I can see no explanation at all uh, why the Mayor of London, we weren't around that table. I think lives could have been saved if we were earlier. Greater Manchester Mayor Andy Burnham testified that he felt the Downing Street-focused decision-making saw Manchester being punished with Tier 3 lockdowns and some decision-making which made no sense at all on the ground. The thing that sticks in my mind from the period we're talking about is genuine astonishment when word came through from officials who were in good contact with civil servants saying that local testing would be stood down. You know, I could not even begin to get my head around why local testing teams in our, what were CCGs at the time, would be stood down. If there's one thing that Prime Minister Rishi Sunak loves, it's a global summit. Fresh from his AI summit, which promised plenty but delivered little, he was busy on Monday addressing a global investment summit at Hampton Court Palace before attendees headed to a reception at Buckingham Palace with King Charles. Rishi was keen to emphasise that Britain is open for business and the headline investment figure for the conference is £29.5 billion, but it's not clear when exactly that money will arrive. He also ruled out closer ties with China and went all out to make the visiting venture capitalists welcome. There's not governments that grow the economy. It's businesses and investors like all of you. And it may be unfashionable to say, but I believe that your success is our country's success. There was good news on Monday for those facing long NHS waiting lists. The government has finally come to an agreement with senior doctors in England, which could see an end to their ongoing strike action. The strike involves both members of the British Medical Association and the Hospital Consultants and Specialists Association, but there have been secret talks going on for weeks. 
The deal sees an improvement on Rishi's first and final offer, with senior medics receiving an increase of at least 4.95%. Both sides were keen to avoid strikes during the winter when the NHS is under most pressure, and new Health Secretary Victoria Atkins is keen to resolve matters with striking junior doctors next. I'm very much open to discussions with them. I have met them, and again, I'm, I'm very much hoping that we can reach a fair and reasonable settlement, because every single appointment that is rescheduled, of course, means someone somewhere is either in pain or in distress and we all of us want the NHS to work in the best interests of our patients. Still to come on the Smart 7, why Olivia Coleman won't say cheese and Man City look forward to Leipzig right after this. We need USAA insurance to help you save. Take advantage of discounts when you cover your home and your ride. Discover how we're helping members save at usaa.com slash bundle. USAA. Restrictions apply. Welcome back. Monday night saw Fulham host Wolves in the Premier League and win by three goals to two in a game that saw three penalties awarded. All eyes are now on Tuesday's Champion League's games, with Newcastle away to PSG and Man City entertaining German side RB Leipzig. Pep Guardiola knows his team are already qualified and only need a point from the game to ensure that they top the group, so he was in cheery form at the pre-match press conference. I think we're performing really, really well. So we have to continue. We are not top of the league. How we perform, I'm very, very pleased, really. Uh, I, I would say, if I don't like, I would say, OK, I'm not so satisfied or I don't like much, but I think we are playing good. Outside of her multiple award-winning acting roles, we don't see a lot of Olivia Coleman. She keeps a low profile, and it turns out there's a good reason for that. On Monday, she popped up on the News Agents podcast to talk about her work with domestic abuse charity Tender UK. She's a patron of the charity, which aims to promote healthy relationships and prevent sexual violence. Coleman says that she just got sick of paparazzi lurking round her bins. Oh, we've moved out of London because I couldn't actually cope with it. Would you watch any of these documentaries about people who, who have it much more than me? It, it damages you and I, it, was, it was a safety mechanism to, to get out, to leave. I love my job. I never signed up for all the other shit. Boy Swallows Universe is a new Australian series about to hit Netflix. It's based on the novel of the same name by Trent Dalton and it follows the semi-autobiographical story of Eli Bell, played by Felix Cameron. If that sounds fairly tame so far, you may need to buckle up. It's set in Brisbane's underworld and follows Eli as he gets caught up in the crimes of his drug-dealing stepdad while trying to rescue his mother from drug addiction. It's a wild ride and it drops on January 11th. I'm going to find him. I'm going to get the cash to move mum away from here. What if they lock you up? Well, they'll have to catch me first. You have strength in your boy. The conflict between these gangs is coming to a head. Get those kids... Or else I'll have to do it for you. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hi, friends. It's me, Sharon McMahon, host of Here's Where It Gets Interesting, a podcast that tells the stories of America you probably haven't heard. Our goal is to ignite your curiosity about the fascinating people and events left out of the textbooks. I'm often joined by guests who share with us their insights about history, culture, and politics. So tune in and get ready to learn about some of the most brain-tingling moments in American history. You can listen to Here's Where It Gets Interesting wherever you get your favorite podcasts. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com. <laughs>